Sasha looked at the skinny little boy sitting in the corner on a tattered couch. His fists involuntarily clenched. Sasha wanted to scream, to scream at the top of his lungs. Aha! Releasing all the pent-up emotions, his voice cracking, letting it all out. Who will take care of the boy and arrange for him to go to the orphanage? Asked a stout woman in a black scarf, presumably a neighbor. Natka had no one, poor thing. She was from the orphanage herself. Oh my, what a life she had. And now the boy will be an orphan. Sasha looked at the boy, picking at the worn upholstery of the couch. He's already sickly, and now this. Dad, Daddy! Seven year old Sasha ran through the forest, holding a mushroom. Look, Daddy, I found a mushroom. Daddy, where are you? Sasha clearly saw his father's blue sweater disappearing through the bushes. Daddy, Daddy. Sasha didn't emerge from the forest until evening. He nearly stepped into a swamp twice, and mosquitoes had bitten him. He was hungry and thirsty. Lost, he was lost. The thought kept pounding in the boy's head. Papa would be proud of him, what a brave boy Sasha was. Finding his way back on his own, he walked for a long time until nightfall. He was tired, freezing, and cried and shouted several times, but all in vain. Sasha fell asleep under a little fir tree, wrapping himself in the torn moss nearby. Exhausted, hungry, and worn out, he fell asleep. He woke up in the morning and ran again. This time Sasha got lucky. He reached a road where big cars were zooming by. One such big car stopped near Sasha and took him straight to the hospital. Barely opening his eyes, Sasha provided his details, where he lived, with whom, how he got lost, and what happened to him. My dad is worried and looking for me. Please tell him, Sasha requested. Don't worry, little hero. We'll inform your dad. They assured him. By evening, a man in uniform came to see him and asked various questions, jotting things down. Have you found my dad? Have you told him yet? The man tilted his head, instructed Sasha to get better, and left. But Papa didn't come. Not in the evening, nor the next day. Sasha waited, staring out the window, waiting. Then some ladies came for him. They didn't explain anything. They just came and took him away. They took him to a place where there were many children without parents. This must be a mistake, Sasha said. I have parents. I have a dad and Aunt Nadia. The children laughed and taunted Sasha, and then they beat him. It was because he stubbornly insisted that he would be taken away, that his father would come for him. Then Sasha was called into the director's office. Sasha, said the stern, tired lady, you are a big boy now and I will talk to you as an adult, Sasha. I know you have trouble getting along with the other children. I want to tell you something. Don't wait for your dad. He won't come for you, understand? No one will come for you. Get used to being with the other kids here. What about my dad? What? You're lying. My dad will come for me. Sasha screamed, crying. Why are you lying? You stole me from my dad. Take me home. I want to be with my dad and Aunt Nadia. Sasha had a meltdown. Calm down, calm down, said Nina Fyodorovna. Come here. Sasha cried and rolled on the floor, screaming like a wounded animal loudly and abruptly. Ah, ah, ah. Sasha couldn't breathe. He was gasping and sobbing. All right, boy, boy, that's enough. Calm down, my dear. Calm down. Nina Fyodorovna comforted Sasha, right there on the floor in the director's office, and then she picked him up and they went to the bedroom. Sasha fell asleep.
He woke up and fell asleep again. There, my boy, Shu, whispered a kind nurse who worked at the orphanage. Later on, Nina Fyodorovna gently told Sasha that his dad had ended up in prison. For some crime, a minor offense, as she said, and Aunt Nadia. She was actually a stranger on paper. That's why Sasha was there. It was later, after some time had passed and Sasha stopped expecting any news from his father, that the older kids told him somehow that his father was in prison because of Sasha. Aunt Nina? Sasha came to Nina Fyodorovna's office. Tell me, did he really want to kill me? She hugged him and they stood there for a long time. Sasha couldn't cry anymore. He buried his face in Nina Fyodorovna's stomach and his shoulders trembled. Why did he treat me like that, Aunt Nina? I don't know, Sasha. They say your stepmother grew to hate you and gave your father an ultimatum to get rid of you. I'm sorry, but I have to tell you. When they arrived, they lived peacefully doing household chores. They said that a suddenly arrived cousin of your mother took you away. Your father didn't resist for long, and he sighed with relief upon hearing that you were alive. But your stepmother started shouting that you were ruining her life, that she couldn't have her own child because of you. She must have been mentally disturbed or something. In the end, they were both punished, Sasha. That's how it happened. Do you remember your mom at all? No. She passed away when I was little. You know, your father said he never wanted to harm you. He was just afraid his wife, that she would leave him. She lied to him, saying she was pregnant. She lied. She blackmailed him. What goes through a person's mind when they abandon their own child in the forest? That's how it was, Sasha. I'm sorry you had to grow up so quickly. But what does it have to do with you, Aunt Nina? Thank you for telling me. I've been waiting. Sasha, don't answer right away. Think about it. I want to offer you something. Would you like to live with me? You? You want to be my mom? Nina Fyodorovna nodded silently, and Sasha hugged her just as quietly. Mama. He whispered a word he had never said to anyone before. My mama. They left there as soon as all the paperwork was done, and Sasha took on his mother's last name. Nina didn't have any children of her own, and that's why her marriage ended. She never remarried, afraid of experiencing disappointment once again. Sasha grew up, finished his studies, and he and his mother returned to the city where they once lived. Mom, I want to find them, Sasha said. His mother understood everything without words. Sashenka, are you sure? She asked. Yes, mom, he replied firmly. I'm with you, my son. And so they arrived. It turned out that his father was no longer alive. He had died three years ago from alcoholism. But as for the stepmother, I remember Sasha well, said their neighbor on the right, Grandma Katya. Sasha remembered her too. He was a good boy, a good family. It was Vitya who raised the boy himself until he turned five. He seemed tired of being alone. And Nadezhda, she was young and seemed good to all of us. But then it turned out differently. At first, no one believed what they had planned. But then, Sasha, I used to go to the orphanage and bring you treats. Oh. First, she left and came here, and then your father joined her. They must have had love between them. At first, they lived quietly, found jobs somewhere. But then they started drinking and fighting. He would hit her and scream that she ruined his life, that he lost his son. They didn't tell him where you were, Sasha. He searched. Well, that's what he said. He wanted to beg for forgiveness. And then she gave birth to a little boy. They named him Pasha. Your father actually wanted to name him Sasha. But we convinced him not to. It wouldn't be right. Since there was already a Sasha. He talked about you all the time, Sasha. He regretted it. 
I'm burdened with guilt, Aunt Katia, a great sin. There's no forgiveness for me, he would say. He would shout like a wild animal once he had a drink. And he would hit her, and she endured it. And now, Pasha, he will follow your path. He's completely alone. He has no one. He has a brother, Sasha said, turning to his mother. I won't let him go to any orphanage. I'm his biological brother, Pasha. Sasha approached the boy, who sat alone on the couch, big tears rolling down his sharp little knees. Pasha, look at me, Sasha said, squatting down next to the boy. Look at me. Do you know who I am? The boy lifted his tear-stained face and shook his head. I'm your brother, Sasha, and this is my mother, Aunt Nina. Will you come live with us? I'm your brother, Pasha, your older brother. Will you come with me? The boy nodded, and Sasha pulled the frail body of the little one close to him. Mom, today I'm going to introduce you and Pasha to someone. Oh, really? And who is it? Mom asks. Oh, Mom, it's another serious love, says the teenager sitting in the armchair. No, this time it's for real. Sasha replies, Yeah. Nina Fyodorovna and Pasha laugh. Why am I to blame if they start making faces and judging Pasha? Sasha says with frustration. They immediately begin questioning, asking why he can't live with his own mother, and why this and that. Vika is different. I told her our story, like it happened with friends, and she burst into tears. I could barely calm her down. You know how she is. Just go ahead with your Vika. Right, Pasha? Nina Fyodorovna adds. Of course, I hope she won't run away. She didn't run away. Vika created a strong family, gave birth to two children, loves her husband, respects her mother-in-law, and also cares for Pasha. Pasha holds a special place in Vika's heart and calls her his little sister. The kids have forgotten everything that happened to them. They agreed not to dwell on the past. They love their mother, visit their parents once a year, on that same day when everyone goes to their families. They have forgiven everything. One must know how to forgive, indeed. It's okay not to forget, but it's better to let go. You can't live your whole life dwelling on the past. After all, the past is the past. Let it stay there. Good morning, my dears. Sending you tight hugs. Sending rays of my kindness and positivity. Always yours.